So you have a custom GPT and wanna turn that into a mobile app, but you don't know how to code, you don't know how to design the UI, and you don't know how to package everything into a bundle and upload to the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store. Well, coming in just a few months, the no-code platform bubble is gonna allow you to deploy right to the app stores without any extra steps. Now we can still build mobile apps with Bubble, but wrapping them into APK files, which is used for the Google Play Store, or IPA files, which is used for the iOS App Store, is a little bit tricky. But don't worry, we can still optimize our apps for mobile and prepare ourselves to release the custom GPTs to both stores. And if you're antsy and you can't wait for this feature release, I'm gonna show you how to do it with the current tools we have available. Okay, we have this custom GPT drawn to style. It takes rough sketches of drawings and then turns it into polished art. It's using Dolly 3. We're gonna take this custom GPT and turn it into a mobile application. First off in your bubble editor, go to plugins, API connector. You're gonna need the OpenAI API. I'm gonna click expand here. I've showed how to make these calls in previous videos. If you're completely new to this, please watch those. It will save some time instead of going through it again here. But we're gonna need two calls. We're gonna need GPT Vision. That model is gonna allow us to look at the sketch drawing. And then we're gonna need Dolly 3 to actually generate those images. Once that is set up, we're gonna double click on the blank page. We're gonna go to Layout. I like to change the container layout to column, which means it stacks elements from top to bottom. And then we're gonna change preset page width to mobile. And to make things visually easier, let's change the default builder width to something like 400 pixels wide. So that's gonna change it to look like a mobile screen. And now we can design and edit with the mobile view in mind. Now, something important to take into consideration when designing for mobile, you are not gonna be creating multiple pages. Mobile apps work best when everything is on one single page. And to make it look like multiple pages, we're gonna be using something called states to change the look of the page. So for example, I'm gonna double click on the page. Let's shrink the height to 500 just so we can see everything. On the elements, I'm gonna select floating group. I'm gonna drag it onto the page. Let's make the color of the floating group. I'm gonna make it kind of like a dark red or maroon, just so you can see what's going on. Let's go to layout. We're gonna make the container layout a row, and we're not gonna have it a fixed width, so it's gonna stretch all the way across the page. Let's make the height of this bar 75 pixels tall, and over in appearance, we are going to select vertically float relative to, but let's snap it to the bottom. Now it's already starting to look like a mobile app and this bottom floating bar usually has some images or icons in it that when you tap, it goes to multiple pages. So I'm gonna select the icon element. Let's drag it into the floating group. Let's make that color white. I'm gonna search for home icon in the layout, let's make it 50 by 50. I'm gonna copy this element, paste another one inside. I'm gonna search for a picture icon, and then I'm gonna copy this element, paste it inside again. This time I'm gonna search for user. Let's look at this one. There we go, click on the floating group, go to layout. I'm gonna click the last container alignment, which will stretch each icon across the element. And let's add some padding. So maybe 25 pixels from the left and 25 pixels from the right. Then on each element, we can center it. There we go. And then the last one, there we go. It's like we have a navigation bar at the bottom of our mobile app. Every time someone taps on this icon, it can change the page in the app. And to give you an idea of how that looks, I'm gonna add some groups onto the page. In this group, I'm gonna add a text that says home. I'm gonna make it really large and bold. Okay, I'm gonna copy this group, paste it in again. In this group, I'm gonna write GPT, and I'm gonna copy and paste that one more time. And in this group, I'm gonna write profile. So to help you visualize, we have a home page, a page with your GPT on it, and then a page where it's your profile. 
And those are the three icons at the bottom, home, GPT, profile. Now let's double click outside of the page. We're gonna click the eye icon up here. We're gonna add a new custom state. We're gonna call this state name page and the type is going to be text. Let's hit create. By default, the page will be home. And then if I click on the home group, I can go to layout. This element is not visible on page load and is collapsed when hidden. Collapse when hidden means when it's not shown, when it's not visible, it completely shrinks to zero pixels. If you didn't have this checked, there would be an empty space where that element should be, and that doesn't look good for UI. Now, in conditional, I'm gonna define a condition when the page, which is called drawn to style, when its page is home, this element is gonna be visible. Let's do the same for the GPT group. I'm gonna to go to layout. It's not visible on page load and collapse when hidden. The condition will be when drawn to styles page is GPT, this element is visible. And let's do the same for the profile. Layout, not visible on page load, collapse when hidden, conditions, define a condition. When drawn to styles page is profile, this element is visible. And then for each icon, we can add a workflow when it is tapped and we're gonna go element actions, set the state of the page. We are setting the custom state page. This one's value is home. And let's do the same for each icon here, add workflow, element actions, set state, set the state of the page to GPT. And then the last one, the profile, element actions, set state, and the page will be profile. Now, if I click preview, it's stretching very weird because now it's stretching for the web. So we can always right click, go to inspect, and then see how it looks if this was a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. So you can see it's the home page. If I click on GPT, boom, it snaps to the GPT page. And if I click on profile, it goes to the profile page. Hopefully this helps you visualize what's going on when you use custom states for pages. And of course, this is just the basic bare bones of how to do it. You're gonna to wanna to make it look a lot nicer, better colors, better icons, better UI, make it a professional looking mobile app. In that GPT group, we want to house that drawn to style custom GPT because the app is not gonna get a lot of downloads if it's just switching pages. It has to actually do something. So how do we add that custom GPT into this mobile app? Let's hide the other ones. We need a picture uploader. So I'm gonna drag that in. And in the group, let's first add some padding. I'm gonna give it 25 pixels all the way around just so it's not on the edges of the page. Let's delete this GPT text. And we're gonna stretch this picture uploader all across the page. Let's make it 200 pixels tall. So they upload an image. Then Dolly 3 is gonna create an image after GPT Vision looks at it. So I'm gonna drag in that image element. Let's also stretch that across the page. We're gonna keep element aspect ratio fixed. If I look at my Dolly 3 API call, we're creating a horizontal image. So 1792 by 1024, which is exactly what I'm gonna make this image. Delete the min width. We're gonna make it 25 pixels from the top. Now it's being hidden behind the floating group, so let's just make the page a bit longer. Let's make it 700 pixels. There we go. And we're gonna have to create another custom state. This time it's going to be result, and that state type is going to be an image. Let's hit create. And now clicking on that image, going to appearance, that dynamic image is going to be drawn to styles result. That's the custom state. Now in workflow, we're gonna add an event. When an input's value is changed, we only have one input on the page, so by default, that is the picture uploader. We're gonna to click to add an action, plugins, GPT vision. For the prompt, I'm gonna write, describe this image in as much detail as possible. The image URL that we're sending to GPT vision is going to be insert dynamic data, this picture uploader's value, and then I'm gonna click URL. Because of the way Bubble handles image URLs, we have to manually add HTTPS colon. 
you'll see that their image URLs just start with forward slash forward slash. So we have to add in that extra text. Then we're going to add another action plugins Dolly three. The prompt for Dolly three is going to be the result of step one's choices, first items, message content. That's just a fancy way of saying we are going to use whatever GPT vision spit out. And then we have one more action. We're going to go element action, set the state of the page. The element is going to be that page custom state result. And what we are taking is the result of step two. That's the Dolly three image generation data. Again, first items URL. They're very simple workflow. Your app user uploads an image, something that they have drawn or sketched. GBT vision looks at it, describes it in as much detail as possible. Then Dolly three tries to recreate that image. If you want to make sure that you get the most polished results all the time, you can add to your prompt, draw a full color illustration of this image. And that's whatever GPT vision described. Then we take that result and display it on the page as a custom state. Okay, let's test it out. Here's my mobile app. I'm going to click the custom GPT. Then I'm going to upload an image. Let's pretend I'm on my phone and here is a house that I drew. I sketched this on my phone. And there we go. That's the result. Now your users can share it to their friends on social. They can post it on Facebook or Instagram, send it through WhatsApp or messenger, or they could use the results for their own projects. How you want to package this service is completely up to you. But when you're ready, you can use some user made plugins like natively to wrap your bubble app into a package that can be released on the iOS and Android app stores. Again, this is if you don't want to wait for the official bubble feature. This does cost money. It's $50 per month for both stores. So if you have some patience, I recommend waiting. It's going to happen soon. And if you want to dive deeper into building your own custom AI app where you can design it for the web or mobile, turn all of your AI custom GPT ideas into a business. Click the link in the description below. We have a full module in adding all of the AI features available right now. Soon we're going to get access to Sora, which is an even more powerful AI text to video generator through OpenAI. And as soon as that's released, I'll be adding a lesson in this module of how to connect that to your own custom AI app. And if you like this video, I've selected two more that are on the screen right now. They've been catered to your YouTube watch history. Choose the one that sounds the most intriguing. Give it a click, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.